What I do get a kick out of is that the, um, the, the LS swap headers are so asymmetrical, it's hilarious. That, that side's one. pretty. That is a work of art. Well, yeah, that one's really cool and all the twists and turns and stuff it does. And then that one's really just a bare bones block hugger. It, that one looks like you'd want both of them on bo both sides. You'd want to look like that because it's just so pretty, yeah, but it got, obviously won't work. It must have something to do with steering the starter. shaft, steering shaft and starter. Mm -hmm. Probably the two things. That one's for clearing the starter for sure. That's obviously it's on that side, yeah. but um, on this side, yeah, the only thing I think holding it back is that steering shaft, which we will be doing a steering shaft video later on. But not on this video. <laughs> not on this one. No, we've got sort of a, a small task to do, which hopefully won't turn into a big task, but I mean, we have it a tendency does. to have it go that way. Um, so what we're tackling today is that we're gonna be working on the um, cross member, transmission cross member. Yep, so as you can tell, we have the motor transmission in, the motor is supported. Ta-da! It's got the motor mounts in, all that finally, fun stuff. Finally, finally. Can we just recognize for one second how wonderful it is that there's a motor sitting in this thing finally? Yeah, it's, oh. a, it's a big step. After a month. It's not the step, but it's a big weeks, step. Five weeks, six weeks. Oh, I know, and we got so much more oh, to God, do, but yeah. thank goodness we can finally see a motor sitting in that thing. Uh, what we're hoping for is to use the factory shoebox one. It looks like it's gonna line up. Uh, it's not gonna fit snug, which is okay. We'll start by just resting it in there. We'll get it supported, but knowing that there might end up getting shimmed, or we might have to uh, kind of modify the cross member later on. That's not the end of the world. We just wanna get it so that it's supported and it's kind of where it's gonna be so we can build all the other stuff around it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So with that said, we should probably get to this. Yeah, time is running out. Yep. is like resting against it because that means we got to notch it do you think that that's enough room for the drive shaft or does it need to come down i think it would need to come down just a hair just be safe so we'll we'll actually cut this this transmission cross member a lot i think um god i wish i had some two by four damn that would be perfect if i had some two by four Okay, I think we got our game plan. So what we're gonna do, we figured out a couple of issues. Uh, so with the 700R4, it um, has a fairly good sized mount on the bottom side of it that literally rests, um, it, it actually rests on the center of this thing, it's pretty cool. It's so close. And the funny thing is if we could get like if our motor mounts gave us enough wiggle room going backwards to get butted up against that firewall, we would actually be able to just use this mount um, with a little bit of uh, like spacers on it, uh, and it would fit just fine. But what we're gonna do, because well, I mean we're kind of happy with it where it's sitting anyway, 
uh, we're actually going to cut and notch out this top section here and drop it down and then extend it towards the engine because the bolt from the transmission basically touches this lip right here. So by cutting that center section out, it'll allow us to drop it down quite a bit. And what we'll do is we'll pretty much go most of the way down. Um, we'll probably notch it way down here because then you can always just shim it later on if you need to adjust for driveline uh, purposes. But we will box the whole thing back in so it maintains uh, as much of its rigidity as possible. All right. Got a cut and weld on this cruddy old thing. Should be good and nasty. Grunt? A grunt, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't want to hear you grunt. <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. Your poor wife. <laughs> well, my poor wife. So I do that Ken Kniff from Connecticut voice. You know, are you familiar? No. Okay, so Ken Kniff is uh it's just like you ever listen to rap albums and like there's the random songs that are not actually songs. They're like, like the, the skits or the Yeah, the little fillers thing. that are in there, yeah. Yeah, um, so Eminem's second album, third, technically the third album, um, that's like the Marshall Mathers LP or whatever, uh, there's this, this thing that's just like Ken Kniff from Connecticut, and I don't know, it's just, he makes this like really grody sounding noise, or grody voice or whatever, it's like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I know, exactly, I know exactly what you're talking that about. That dude, um, so I got that from that album and I will do that to my wife sometimes so we'll like have this like nice snuggly moment or something like that and I'll just like reach down and grab a boob and be like oh f yeah <laughs> and she's so turned off by it <laughs> it's like guaranteed to not get action that night <laughs> so how often do you come out here and sleep in the garage then on the couch um well I mean it's my home away from home <laughs> it's my bed away from bed yeah <laughs> All right, so uh, we've got a chopped up cross member. Um, and what we're doing with it is we had to cut out the center section so that we can try and uh, make the new uh, transmission mount on it. Um, we don't get to just straight drill a hole or come straight off the top of it because the 700R4 is just a bigger transmission and just like the shape of it requires it to sit a little bit lower. Um, it's mount locations, mount size. Uh, like the old Ford one had like this really basic, like super flat little mount, whereas like the 700R4 mount is a lot thicker. Um, so it means that we have to actually cut into this and kind of sink things down. So what I'm gonna do, uh, while testing this out, I cut out a little section of uh, two by two, uh, eighth inch thick walled, whatever. Um, when I was setting it in here, I realized that it was gonna end up being offset towards the front a little bit, and this front leg wasn't gonna be supported very well. So I flipped it the other direction, and what we get is a basically perfect location for the hole in it to bolt down. Um, and what I just have to do then is trim the excess off the, uh, technically this is the front of it, so front of the car here, back of the car. So I just gotta trim a little bit of that front section and then tie all the rest of it together because you don't wanna end up having this thing be weak. So we remove material, we wanna replace it. So we're gonna fill in these side pieces, tie it to this piece, and that should kind of uh, give it all of its rigidity back. So the next step is to wheel the car forward, 
we're gonna bolt the cross member on, and then I'm gonna tack weld everything in place so that I can pop it out, weld it, and start building the filling plates all around it. So, uh, first step is to move the car forward. So I don't know if the welder is going to reach that very well. So hey, that turned out awesome. Um, we've got the cross member built. Um, we haven't made it pretty yet. We're not gonna worry about that today. We're gonna handle that once the whole drivetrain comes back out for us to pretty everything up on that and do kind of assembly and all that. Uh, at that point, we're gonna bring it down to get sandblasted and I'll probably powder coat it. We'll see what kind of paint system we use on it. But um, everything looks pretty good so far and it's really sturdy. So. That should be everything we need to do. So we're gonna end the video by just bolting this thing back in, resting the transmission on it, rolling it back, because in the next episode, we're gonna start on the steering system. So we need the drivetrain in here. So thanks for joining us. Enjoy the last few minutes of the video. No more cross-member savage.